back with another Mind of a Black Author podcast, and I'm fresh off of the National Black Book Festival out in Houston. So I thought it might be fun to kind of talk about my experience there and go over a couple things that I learned and some tips and things of that nature, like I did with my previous event at the Texas Author Con. So just to kind of give a background, this has been a festival that's been going on for years and it's built up a big following there are a lot of people there and it's definitely by far the biggest event that i've attended thus far and one of the things i liked about it is you had a whole bunch of people i mean there were people from as far as washington seattle or um i should say seattle washington um, but different areas, South Carolina, D.C., um, they were all over the map. You know, it wasn't just folks out here from uh, Texas. We had a lot of different people, a lot of different genres and a lot of different backgrounds that attended this event. They had over a hundred authors, I believe they said. So it was massive. So. Again, biggest event that I've ever been in. There's pros and cons to that, and I'll kind of talk about that here in just a bit. But for right now, I just want to kind of just give a shout out to the organization that basically created this because as a black author myself, it's sometimes hard to really get a lot of those like-minded people in the same place, something that I found out uh, real early in this one. And you have a lot of folks that are into a whole bunch of different genres. So it's not just one genre that they're into. You get like-minded black folks. And I think putting this together and going on as long as it has is actually a positive because it brings a lot of people together who probably or struggled their way in different other events like I have. You know, certain events is just not for certain books, but this one gives you the opportunity to put a lot of your creative work out there for a lot of eyes. So, again, it's on one of the pricier events, but there's reasons behind it. I mean, because the venue is so large and they also bring in a lot of guest speakers to uh, entertain as well. Hopefully, they'll draw in as well. So... It's a two day event. It was it was fun, but it was definitely, definitely um, wears you out after a while, as I learned. So let's kind of talk about the positives. Um, I really did. Well, I really spoke about the positives, to be honest with you. Um, just getting everybody gathering everybody together. It is in Houston, which is a big city. So it's a nice central hub for everybody to meet. The networking on this event, I think, is top notch. So if you don't do anything else, you'll network with a lot of people who have either been in the industry longer than you or just starting and they're asking you for advice. They're, they look at you at a, a certain level, uh, depending on what you're working on. But networking, you can't get a better networked event for black folks, okay? And I know they said this is the biggest black event in the South, so I really want to see what's the biggest black event, period. I thought this was it, but apparently this is just for the South. Like I spoke about, it was just a whole bunch of people there, and a lot of people that you wouldn't have met any other time. They have this uh, like networking breakfast that they had on Friday and Saturday morning, which I attended both. And at the table that you're sitting at, you're just really just learning the different people who are at the event, the different people that you are meeting for the first time. We're talking about where we're from, you know, things like that and how many books we've written, you know, just kind of getting to know everybody. And I like that. Uh, The second breakfast event, they actually had a scavenger hunt, which again was a great idea because it makes the people who are looking for books kind of scavenging. This was all before we even opened up to the public and they're doing a little event scavenging books. Now, I'm not a big scavenger hunt person, so I didn't partake, but some of the people came by my table looking for a certain book that was supposed to be on a scavenger hunt and none of mine were, but I ended up getting a sale because it caught the eye of somebody who had just happened to pass was looking through the books. And I was like, are you sure you're not, you know, still doing the uh, scavenger hunt? She was like, oh no, I'm done with that. I'm looking to buy books now. So I was like, hey, because of that event, you know, I sold the book. 
But they had another networking um, event that happened on Thursday night. Now, I didn't go to that one. It was a little extra, it was extra money to go to that one. And I was driving in, so I knew I wouldn't be ready to really do anything with that since I drove in on that Thursday. So I missed that event, but I did go to the breakfast um, on the next two days. And the one thing about this event is it's such a big event. And like I said, it's a pricier event, but they also have different add-ons. Like I could have paid to go to that network mixer on that Thursday night. I don't know what happened there because like I said, I was driving in. So, you know, that might've been something worthwhile, but I knew I wasn't going to do it. So I didn't pay for that. Um, and then I also would have had that pay for my wife to go there as well. So it's one of those things where they pay per person. And as far as the breakfast uh, events, I had to pay for her breakfast as well, whereas mine was included with my payment. So there's a lot of things that you can add on. And it was also you can have your face added onto the website, which I didn't do. Um, that was a charge, too. So you can really nitpick and put together exactly the type of package that you want with the event and so however you know much exposure that your budget allows you to do you can actually put that together and piece it together the way that you would like for the experience that you will want looking at the different people it was just so great like the people that i was around we had a fun time you know during the slow periods we were talking and going over everything and i actually sold a book to one of the people who was sitting in front of me and I bought her book as well. So, you know, really just that 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 camaraderie. It, it was just so fun and it was definitely worth it based on that to meet the people that I met. I mean, I met another guy that we're supposed to be trying to hook up at different events <laughs> in the future, but it's just that. I mean, that's really the networking aspect of this. You will never get in the same area. And one of the people who came through there, which I, ooh, I loved, KDP. So if you're doing Amazon, you know about KDP. And the problem with KDP is there's a lot of issues. I have issues with hardcover copies. And I was able to talk to the lady directly. She took a picture of my book. She sent it in to see, you know, what they could find out. Now, I doubt they really do anything. It may have been all for show, but the fact that I could actually talk to somebody about KDP you know, a live person instead of doing the Amazon chat or whatever it is they got on there. I thought that was great. I mean, I was ready to give them a piece of my mind, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> it was just, just to have that in there is just very, very fun. And, you know, just informative with a lot of the contacts there. I cannot stress that enough. Now, as great as this event was, there were a couple of drawbacks that I could see. Um, when you have that many authors in such a confined area, the layout of the tables, I don't think was the best way to do it. Like my table, you know, I, I'm, hopefully I have a picture here, but my table, I was in the second row, so it wasn't too bad. But then there was like maybe about five, six, seven rows behind me. And the... I guess the areas to walk through were kind of difficult if somebody was wanting to see your books and things like that. So I'll give you a perfect example. So I had a table in front of me. I'm in the second row. Okay, so if somebody came to my table to see my books, the person who's sitting at the front row, she had to kind of move out to the side as to not to bump in to the people. Same thing I did with the person behind me when somebody was in her row. I had to scoot up my chair or get up and kind of walk to give them space so they can actually check out her books. Well, imagine that is just two rows and she was behind me. That was the third row and they may have had like about four or five more rows back there. And so it was basically this big cube of tables in the middle of the gym floor and that's really difficult like the people in the middle i know they probably had a hard time really getting their books on display trying to show you know the get their books noticed when you're stacked like that and then it was this one table in the front right corner and they put a big cage on their table to sell like plush dolls uh, hoodies and stuff like that well there was a table behind them <laughs> and there is no way anybody saw that table with that big stack cage right there that should have been put on a back wall or something like that but 
you know, it is what it is. So when you have a hundred authors there, trying to put them all in one space can be difficult, but I really wish they would have did like we did at the Texas Author Con, where you had the back-to-back -back tables where you're down an aisle, like my table is over here, their table is over there, and in this middle, we're kind of behind each other. So what that does is it gives everybody sort of an aisle seat or aisle position to anybody walking down the aisle because the aisles between the tables and the stack cube they were very small to get through and some people had time hard time kind of managing to get through there by doing it this way though where you have the two people back to back facing outwardly you get the front you know the table without any obstruction the only person you have to worry about really is just the person behind you who's working their table too but if you have enough adequate space that shouldn't be a problem so that was my biggest um down for the event i guess and again when you have so many people there and you have the guest speakers and all that i understand getting that many authors but at the same time i thought the layout could have been a tad bit better to see if they could have fit there i wish they would have kind of worked on that a little more in order to make sure that everybody has an optimal display to the crowd that's walking in uh throughout the event but needless to say, it didn't really hinder me. I didn't sell as good as I did as the Texas author con, but I did sell, you know, a decent amount of books. And, you know, thankfully, like I said, if I was in that middle queue part, I don't know if I would have been as successful, but you never really know. Cause like I said, it was very kind of compact in for everybody, for all the vendors. But, you know, hey, I did some, I know I did some more than other folks and it is what it is. You know, I wish I would have done more, but it is what it is. Now, some of that uh, wishing I did more was not their fault. Some of it was my doing. And here is the thing that just irks my nerves. So the books I loaded up on were the ones I really didn't sell too many of, like the ones, my best selling ones and my newer ones. I thought, okay, these ones are going to sell real well. Well, I, I, you know, I did sell a couple of copies of those. But the ones that were selling were my old work, some which I didn't have too many inventory for. And the sci-fi one irked my nerves because I had these uh, two lovely ladies who came and they wanted to buy my sci-fi books. But I sold one to, uh, I only bought one copy of the uh, first sci-fi book and one of them bought that the other one wanted it too but i didn't have any more copies and then i had the second sci-fi book i only had the hard copy not the paperback which she wanted but she ended up buying the hard copy anyway and she really wanted that first book too so i didn't think there'd be a big sci-fi you know group here you know that worked for the texas author con i didn't think it would work for this one but apparently there were people who wanted it then my nola street tales i sold out of those very quick you know i didn't have as many copies of those but they all sold out the chronicles of lelo that one sold out i didn't think that was going to sell <laughs> uh, one man's redemption I sold out of those i hadn't sold one man's redemption i sold one at the texas author con but that is not one of my biggest selling books and I sold out all the copies that I had. So I spent a lot of time trying to determine which books to bring and the layout of my rack, which I'll talk here in a minute. And you just don't know. I think it's a crapshoot. And so what I should have done and make no mistake, I was limited in space because I had to pack my car up and I already had like three and four boxes of books to bring since I am an author of 27 books. So it's kind of crazy, but I had to pick and choose what books to bring. And I sacrificed the sci-fi books in order to bring some of my other books, which I probably should have cut down on those other books and included more sci-fi books as well, including uh, Nola street tale. So if the decisions that you have to make on these things, that one was my fault. I probably should have did a little better with the variety that I picked. Um, this event, I broke out two new things. So I finally had my credit card reader and I had my display rack. So both of these items worked beautifully. The credit card reader, I basically had most of my payments via credit card. So it was worth it. Okay. That thing paid for itself in the first day. And besides that, I mean, it's very easy. Yeah. They take their little cut, but the cut that they take 
you know, compared to the amount of sales I would have missed if I didn't have it, it was worth it. Um, the rack worked out beautifully. So this rack that I'm going to show here, it shows all, it gives me a, the ability to display all of my works. Now I have to kind of skip it to make sure everybody can see each cover. So it's kind of hard to just stack it. So all I can really put on there to make it optimal is about 15 bucks. That leaves 12 books that I can't put on there, but some of those are sequels anyway, so you don't really need those on there. But it was a beautiful display. Every time somebody walked up, they, they were just like, you wrote all these books? Like, yep, and that's not even all of them. So it was a conversation starter, which is the whole point of me getting that rack to really display more books than I was putting out there. Because prior to that, I may was putting like eight books on a table or something like that. And while it looked nice and everything, it just didn't display all of my books. I want these people to see everything that I have to offer to start the conversation because if your covers are nice, that'll bring them in there and then you just have to close this deal. So that I bought on Amazon. It was like for $50 or something like that. And it was worth it because it made me noticeable and stood out in my peers. And it definitely helped that I was on that second row because if I'd have had the lower books on the table, Maybe not as many people would have saw it with the table being in front of me, but because it popped up, they were still able to see it when walking by. Um, so, you know, those two items worked out and uh, hopefully they'll continue to work out in more future events that I go to. Overall, I was pleasantly pleased with the event. I mean, yeah, could I have sold more? Some of it was my fault. Some of it was placement. And the reason I say placement is because I'm watching the eyes of the people who are walking that main row and their eyes are only going to the front tables. They weren't really looking at anything behind there. So placement played a big part. I mean, all things considered, I think I did well, you know, everybody wants to do more. You know, I figured the Texas author con, which is, you know, a variety event as well, but this one being mainly for black folks, you know, and me being a black author, I just thought I probably would have surpassed that. And while I didn't, I did surpass the amount of uh, friends that I made on this um, event, the different networking with different people. And it was a fun event. You know, we had fun. There was laughter. We were <laughs> not going to say some of the things we were talking about, but, you know, it made the event go by a lot better. Um, yes, my feet and ankles were swollen for <laughs> standing up. They weren't swollen, but they were sore for standing up the whole time. And again, I had to stand up and again, placement wise, you know, I had the person in front of me, she's standing up, but keep in mind, you know, she was shorter. So I'm a taller guy. So I'm standing up, but now I'm really blocking the lady who was behind me, you know, so it, it's just placement makes a difference. And I think that people who had those you know, nobody behind them and nobody in front of them that basically had front rows. I think they all had successful days because of that. Whereas folks who were in those rows in the queue behind, it was a challenge for us. But overall, I had fun with it. Um, will I do it again? It depends on the funds because, like I said, this is one of the pricier events. So I'd have to see uh, what the funds are looking like at the time, especially next year because I got something going on. So we'll kind of see where we're at with that, but it was a good event. It was a good experience. You know, I got to see light skin Aunt Viv, <laughs> you know, she was there. She was one of the, uh, paid folks to come in and kind of talk to us. And, you know, it, it was just nice to see her and a couple of others. Matter of fact, let me see, I have it here. So this was the, I know it's hard to see with that little ring there. But these were all the uh, featured authors. And, you know, that costs money. I know it costs money. So for them to actually bring these folks out there and, you know, like I said, they, they were very approachable. I didn't talk to any of them personally because I wanted to stay at my table and still push books when I could. But, you know, I saw some of them. They were all the featured artists. They were like on the back wall, like right across from me. So I was able to see all of them as they come up. And, you know, they were very engaging, taking pictures with everybody. So it was a really cool thing. So, you know, kudos to the... Uh, event folks for setting that up because it's really a good thing i'll see who they have next year uh coming to the event and stuff like that but i will definitely be at more events i'm trying to get a 
hoping to get one last one for the year, but it seems like I may be too late for this one event I was looking at, so this may be my final event for the year. And if it is, I mean, I've had a successful year. I think going to these events has definitely helped me out with my sales and helped me out meeting different people. So I do appreciate the <laughs> opportunity to do this. But as always, you can hit me up at www.enigmakid.com. That's www.enigmakid.com for our folks who are just listening to the podcast. Um, I have pictures and everything on there. Check it out. Also, I'll be uploading some more pictures of the event as the week goes along. So, it's your boy Enigma signing off. Deuces.